Hi, I'm District 1 Commissioner Henry Mitchell of Douglas County, and I'd like to welcome you to the grand opening of this great facility's Boundary Waters Activity Center. Man, this is awesome. Now, you're gonna get a chance to see kind of how the whole program went, and I know this kind of sort of a delayed program, but you're gonna see how the program went, all the things that, that we had. We got a guest speaker by the name of Mike Glenn. He's played with the NBA, he did some great college balls, he's got all kind of accolades. And also, you'll hear from my colleagues about their thoughts and their views on how we got here. This is gonna be a historic moment right here in Douglas County as we do the grand opening of the Douglas County Boundary Waters Activity Center. So welcome, come on and join me as we get started on this. My name is Gary Dukes and I'm the Director of Parks and Recreation for Douglas County. I'd like to welcome all of you this morning on behalf of the board, the Douglas County Board of Commissioners, to our grand opening and ribbon cutting. I've got to tell a short story, it won't be long, but a short story about how this all started. I was in my office several years ago, maybe a little more than several years ago, and I got a call from Commissioner Mitchell and Commissioner Robinson. And they wanted to have a sit down and talk about parks and recreation in Douglas County. So I said, sure, let's, uh, let's set it up. So we had a meeting and I went over and sat down with them and we went over a lot of facilities and what needed to be done in the county. And finally uh, they said, well, what's, what's needed the most in the county? I said, well, we, you know, we've got, we've got a lot of cleanup to do, but what we really need is some indoor facilities, places our kids and residents can go in and take classes and, you know, in the summer when it's hot, they can come in, in the winter they can come in and exercise and, you know, have a nice facility. And, and if we're going to compete in the metro Atlanta area and be a metro Atlanta county, we need to step up our game. So uh, they talked a little bit. So, you know, we go on, the conversation goes on, and finally, as all conversations do in politics, <laughs> they say, uh, well, how are, we gonna, how are we gonna do this? How are we gonna fund it? So we talked about several funding mechanisms and the way it should be funded, and finally, you know, we didn't decide on it then, but the consensus was, we needed a SPLOST, a special local purpose, special, local help me out here, local, <laughs> local, <laughs> option, local option sales tax. There you go. <laughs> local option sales tax. So uh, they said, well, you know, that sounds pretty good. How much is this going to cost us to get this done? And I could see the, I told them. And I could see the eyes widen a little bit, you know, and the throat go a little dry. And <laughs> after I picked them up off the floor, <laughs> they said, well, let's do this. Let's do this. Let's, let's move ahead. So they were part of that initiative to get the splashed out for parks and recreation. And the rest is history. You see it here. Um, it started with a plan. Um, the commissioners supported it. They got behind it. Uh, the citizens embraced the splashed. So I would like now to give the commissioners and the citizens, yourselves, a big applause 
for this building and supporting this building. You know, there's some other 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 people I'd like to recognize. This is there's when you start trying to thank people, you leave people out. But there's a few, just a few. I'd like I feel like I need to recognize um, Pete Sutton, uh, Sutton Architects. Pete, are you here? Pete's over there in the in the corner. He designed this building. Uh, Ray Lynn. And associates Tanya Jackson, Samant Komkari, and Rick Prothrop. You guys here, raise your hand, please. Did a great job that, uh, constructing this building. We had very few problems throughout, and uh, I was just talking to Pete about it. They did a phenomenal job uh, putting this building together. I'd also like to thank one Atlas, Terry Gable, the Splash Program Manager. Yeah. Terry, yeah. You're back there. Yeah. And our Douglas County Splash Communications Director, David Good. David, are you here? Yeah. David's there. So those were just a few of the team that uh, we had put this together, and of course, uh, the support of. Uh, our entire board of commissioners and our county administrator, Sharon Subedan. Would Sharon, would you stand, please? Thank you. Okay, at this time, we have a special guest with us that I'd like to uh, tell you a little bit about. If I can uh, get this apart. Mike Stinger Glenn. Mike Stinger Glenn. Mike started the nation's first major summer basketball camp, a camp for hearing impaired athletes. That was in 1980. This year will celebrate its 41st year and plans to continue with this camp into the future. In 2013, Mike had his debut as an actor, playing himself in the award-winning movie Spirit of Love, the Mike Glenn story. The film won Best Inspirational Movie of the Year at the ICM, Country Music Association in Nashville, Tennessee. Mike also has been awarded numerous other awards a two-time NCAA Academic All-American Basketball Player, number one voted Academic All-American Basketball Player in 1977, the Walter P. Kennedy Citizenship Award, the NBA Players, NBA Players Association Spirit of Love Award, the Gate City Bar Association Professional Athlete Award, the Leadership Atlanta Class of 1988-89 Award, the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Community Service Award given by the Roberto Gosueta Business School at Emory University in 2001, the Hosea Williams Award for Community Activism given by Georgia State University in 2009, the Operation Lifesaver Incorporated Champion Award in 2010, the National Service Above Self Award by the Springfield Mass Rotary Club in 2015. Mike was also elected to the Board of Directors of the National Basketball Retired Players Association and was selected to the All Century Team at Southern Illinois University in 2014. In 2016, Mike was introduced into the Georgia Sports Hall of Fame and the Missouri Valley Conference Hall of Fame in 2015. Currently, he is a television basketball analyst for Fox Sports Southeast. He is also a renowned motivational and inspirational speaker. Oh, and did I mention Mike played 10 years in the NBA and also had time here with our Atlanta Hawks. Mike's latest book, My Next Shot Goes In, 
10 sacred characteristics of NBA players that lead to success is available and will be available for purchase in our lobby. Ladies and gentlemen, Georgia's own Mr. Mike Glenn. Wow, thank you very much for that warm and wonderful introduction. Everybody has been so hospitable and just such a spectacular occasion. I'm really honored to be here with you today. So thank you very much, Commissioner Mitchell, for inviting me and letting me share this occasion. I feel right at home when you mention a gym and a recreation center. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I remember actually when I was 12 years old playing and had a uniform and playing at the Rome Recreation Center in Floyd County. And uh, we had a free throw shooting contest. I didn't know we were having it that day, but I happened to win that award and to win my first trophy. And I can remember going to the car and showing mom, mom, I got a trophy, I got a trophy. And that is still to this day, the most sacred trophy I've ever won. I still own it in my home today. I've won many others from the NBA, from uh, the state of Georgia, et cetera, et cetera. But that was a really spectacular award. So what you all are doing here is very important. I assure you, you are impacting some lives in ways that you will never know. And the legacy of that will live forever. So I applaud all of you for what you have done here today. And first of all, let me say I surely enjoyed the new Manchester High School Band. Weren't they awesome? <laughs> Those Jaguars were awesome. I got a chance as a young man to hear Florida and them marching 100. I went with my dad. We were going down to play Florida School for the Deaf in St. Augustine, and we went to their game. And uh, I got a chance to hear them when Bob Hayes was at the uh, end for that team. Some of you guys in my age group will remember those days. But that reminded me of the FAMU Marching 100, and that's the highest compliment you can give any marching band. <laughs> and I love Tennessee State and Southern and all of those. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. I know we probably got some people from those schools and Marsh, Brown, and Clark and all those too. But uh, the FAMU 100 does some special Marching 100. So today, for this incredible occasion, to Chairman Dr. Ramona Jackson-Jones, District 1 Commissioner who first invited me, Henry Mitchell III, Vice Chair and District 2 Commissioner Kelly G. Robinson, District 3 Commissioner Tarena Carthen, and District 4 Commissioner Ann jones Guido, and other elected and appointed officials and special guests. It is indeed my pleasure to join you this morning for the grand opening of this stunning government facility here in Douglas County. This beautiful facility built by Ray Lynn and Associates and Southern Architectural Services with an investment of $7.5 million. Yes, indeed. That's worthy of a hand. <laughs> It brings new energy uh, to Douglas County, and it certainly does. I knew when I was invited to serve as a master of ceremonies for you today, I could only say yes and thank you very much. I uh, had a, a tour of the facility and uh, two full-size high school regulation basketball courts. Felt like this is one of the places that I grew up where a pickle pickleball, volleyball games could be played. This gigantic building also includes an exercise room, weight room, and a multi-purpose room. So it's something here for everyone. Everyone is welcome to share in this, and we'd love to see you here enjoying the facilities and encouraging, especially our youth, to take advantage of this opportunity. This is a place to be for existing and new residents and people all over the region, and I'm sure they will be coming. So you don't have to take my word for it. The Douglas County Parks and Recreation Department staff will be giving everyone tours after this program, which will include a ceremonial open shot and a ribbon cutting ceremony and unveiling of a historical plaque to remember this significant day. So before we get to see the facility and hear more music from this wonderful band, 
let's get the program on the on the road. I want to introduce you to the Douglas County Administrator, the highest appointed government official in Douglas County, Ms. Sharon D. Subodan, for a formal county greeting, and she'll be followed by Mr. Brandon Penniman, the youth pastor at Crossroads Church, who will bring us the invocation, which is a blessing over this new facility and all who are here. So let's first please welcome Ms. Subodan. Thank you, Mr. Glenn, for that warm introduction. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. I didn't hear that. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Well, first, I want to sincerely appreciate Mr. Glenn for being here with us this morning, taking the time to celebrate with us. And secondly, I want to acknowledge my board, my bosses, who are here, as well as any other elected and appointed officials, if you'll take a second to stand so you can be recognized. <laughs> Thank you. We couldn't do what we do without you. Proverbs 16, 3 says, Commit to the Lord whatever you do, and he will establish your plans. Today shows how committed the Douglas County Board of Commissioners are when it comes to the voting of you, our citizens. Was that on cue? <laughs> so you know you're in Douglas County because nobody ducked, right? Nobody ducked when they heard a bang. <laughs> Thank you, Sheriff. <laughs> um, citizens voted to expand the parks and recreation here with a significant investment in this facility for Douglas County. The support of the Douglas County community has made this project possible because it was paid for with your special purpose local option sales tax plus dollars. For those of you who don't know, that's a penny, but it's the most powerful penny that we can use to do things like this for you, our citizens. So thank you. The 2016 SPLOS program is thriving because Douglas County voters recognize the opportunity to address the areas of improvement needed in our community and decided to support being part of a thriving, thriving and vibrant work, live, and play community by affirming the SPLOS. What's even better is it's estimated that about 40% of all SPLOS dollars are paid by people who visit our community, so it makes it more equitable. This beautiful 30,000 square foot facility right here came out of the Parks and Recreation section of the SPLOST. And quick plug, the SPLOST is gonna be back on the referendum next year. Who wants to see more facilities like this? So I am very grateful today for this opportunity. I'm grateful to the Board of Commissioners, my staff, the contractors, and everyone here today who made this possible. It is indeed a great day in Douglas County. You are welcomed here. Good morning, Douglas County. It is great to see each and every one of you here today. Um, before we get started with the invocation, I just want to take a few moments for you to give it up for yourselves because you guys are responsible for this. So give it up for yourselves. You took care of taking care of this building. And as Mr. Glenn said, you're going to touch so many lives in the future that you have no clue about. Um, but quickly, let's take it to the Most High God who is responsible for all of this, for, responsible for us waking up this morning. Father God, we thank you so much for who you are. God, this morning we come thanking you for the beautiful weather today. Thank you for life and breath. Thank you for loving us and keeping us and taking care of us. Father God, this morning we just want to come asking that you bless this building, God. We ask that you bless this space, that you be here, that you be present, God. That you consume this space, God, that it will be a place where people will grow, where love will be seen, God, 
and where more of you will be seen. Father God, we pray right now that this would be another pillar in our community that shows who you are, God. A God of unity, a God of peace, a God of community, a God of love. We pray right now, Father God, that you would bless all of Douglas County. We pray, Father God, that you would continue to touch the minds of our leaders, God, and allow them to lead with integrity, with honesty, and with a mindset for those who they lead, God. God, finally, I thank you for each and every citizen of Douglas County, and I pray that your blessings would just consume this entire county, God, that we will remain protected, that we will remain led by you, God, and that we will remain serving each other. We love you, Father God, for who you are, and we thank you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks so much, uh, Pastor Peniman and Ms. Subadan. It is time for us to remember our flag. And to help us do this, we would like to now welcome the Alexander High School Color Guard. They will present our colors today. The Pledge of Allegiance will be done by Mr. Chad Griffin, Assistant Director of Parks and Recreation, followed by the multi-award winning acapella group Intone Nation. And they're going to lead us in the national anthem. Will you please stand if you are able, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. one more thing there will be some wonderful moments and people that will arise from this experience it will be kind of like a destiny uh, deciding moment I can remember growing up and uh, my dad was a coach at Georgia School for the Deaf and the gym was about the size of these gyms here and I can remember going with him at about seven or eight years old just happy to be with my dad walking across the floor he coached high school girls and boys basketball at Georgia School for the Deaf and the deaf girls on his team saw me a little seven-year-old kid walking across the court with my dad and they just ran out on the court and start picking me up and kissing me on the jaw Commissioner Mitchell <laughs> so you know you don't know how to appreciate those kisses at that time like you can later on in your life so I started yeah dad help me these girls are attacking me out here and they're not even saying anything and you know dad did explain to me he said Mike these girls are deaf he says that mean they can't hear or talk to you he said but they want to be your friend he said, now, if you want to be their friend, you're going to need to learn some sign language. Now, I thought about that at about seven years old. And I decided, OK, I will learn some sign language. And the girls just adopted me into their culture. 
They started teaching me how to sign, teaching me to play basketball, and congratulating me, saying, you did good, that's good. And so that was a destiny-defining moment for me that happened right there on the gym, and that would determine the course of my life forever from that moment. So there will be some destiny deciding moments that will happen in this facility. You may not know it when it'll happen, but sometimes somebody will grow up and they'll contribute greatly in variety of ways. And it will be because of the facility that was the home that could allow something like this to happen. So again, my congratulations, I can't say it enough. Now, to hear more <clears throat> about this fabulous facility and the story behind how it all came together and became possible from the actual groundbreaking to today's event. It has taken stakeholders, community members, teamwork, citizens, and finally SPLOS dollars. Citizens pennies helped bring this dream of a new service and made it possible. Uh, wouldn't you say Ray Lynn and Associates did a fabulous job on the construction work. <laughs> Absolutely. It's just fabulous. Well, Douglas County Commissioner, Chair of Parks and Recreation Committee, Henry Mitchell III, has been committed to seeing this project become reality. We welcome him now with some remarks and acknowledgments. Please, Henry Mitchell III, please. Thank you, Mike. Uh, that's a tough act to follow for all the things in which I would say that he's done and all the great things he's done on the court, uh, whether it's the NBA or college, I think he's done an excellent job. So let's give him a nice hand for just coming out here being a part of this grand occasion. And yes, uh, I do have a couple of acknowledgments and I want to acknowledge my colleagues because without my colleagues, this would not be possible. And most of all, without you, it would have not ever became uh, the reality of what we're looking at as of today. So I want to first do this, though, because I, I made a boo-boo last time when we did the, the uh, Senior Citizens Grand Opening. And if I could have, and if you guys can let me all just jump off schedule for just one minute, and I want to ask these two guys to come up, and that would be David and uh, Terry, if you guys would come up, and as they're coming, I just want to tell you guys, without these two guys and pulling this thing off, we wouldn't be here. Um, they really are the nuts and bolts behind what we're doing and, and this building and getting these splash dollars moving and shaping and baking them and putting them in the right place. And, and I know when, I, when Kelly and I have these conversations with these guys, they, they, they sometimes, as stated, you know, it's, it's tough. <laughs> it's some tough moments, but they're real because we're acknowledging your wishes and your dreams and your thoughts and your goals as to what you guys were expecting from that splash dollars. And we took those ideas and thoughts and, and even prayers to these gentlemen to say, this is what we expected. So if you guys would just allow me to step aside for just a moment to allow these two guys just to talk about kind of what this is and how this all came about and their role in this particular building. If you guys give them a nice hand, thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, I want to welcome everybody here today. It's been a it's been a a, a, a thing in the making since about last March. Um, I want to again credit Ray Lynn and and Pete Sutton, the architects, who done a great job. Um, we had a great team uh, along with David and I, and uh, James Worthington was part of the team. But uh, it was a, a a great project. A lot of challenges in the beginning. Um, took about a year and a half to build it. Um, had some problems with supplies as, as a lot of projects are doing now, but we've worked through those issues and then brought it in under, under, uh, on schedule and on, uh, under budget. So we're very proud of that. Very proud for the community. And, uh, and please, just enjoy it. And I think it's a great a asset for the county. Oh, well, thank you very much, uh, citizens. Um, when you think of this building, you really think of, hey, what is it that we can do for the community? So when they brought me in and said, hey, we want to make sure that we know what the citizens want, we made sure we went to you guys and said, well, what do you want to see? 
in this location. You know, people say, well, we want to have gyms, we want to be able to have a place to have uh, family reunions, we want to be able to work out, and we want to be able to walk indoors in, in case you have bad Georgia weather, which we always do have. So that's the reason, that's what we came up with. And just in communicating, there are things that bring you back to ground zero. When there was a tornado that happened in Alabama and messed up a building that actually was storing parts for this building. And when you go up to the commissioners and you say, well, well David, how come it's not coming on? He said, well, what had happened was, that's really <laughs> exactly, and it just does not sound believable, but things that happen outside of your control, God still made, found a way to make sure it happened, but he was like, hey, make sure you still let the commissioners know, because you never want to build something and something is missing and they speak to you and say, well, this is what's happening. And they say, well, it's July, I don't see no movement. Well, we have to make sure we communicate that information. So this building is 30,000 square feet. I would never be able to say any of this communication without the help of Terry, because Terry makes sure that I knew the technical information to give to the commissioners, make sure I had the technical information to give out to you guys. And if you guys can tell the way that Gary Dukes is, he's very calm, cool, and collected, and he knows how to make sure that the citizens get what they want. So I want to say thank you, not only to the Board of Commissioners, Madam Subedan, Gary, and Terry, and everybody else, but I really want to say thank you again to you guys, because it's for you. It's not for us, it's for you. And uh, thank you, Commissioner, for letting us speak. You got it. Thank you. Now, he's just being real modest, because, you know, when the commissioners start yelling about this whole thing of, what do you mean we don't have the elevator ready? What do you mean? Well, there was this tornado that came through and this is what happened and all these other stories, but they understand that we all are very unique in our own little ways. So just, just work with us and bear with us. Again, thank you and thank you, uh, Terry, and thank you, uh, David, for a job well done and we are just so pleased as to what we've got here. With that being said, also, I want to acknowledge our DA. I want to just wave and just thank you for coming out. And, and did we miss any other elected officials, or appointed officials that, that decided to take this nice, beautiful Friday and hang out with us? Any others? OK, well, thank you. at uh, the school board, I, well, he didn't wait. I, I, he's, oh, there he is. OK, all right, thank you. Thank you for showing up and, and support. And we got a lot of room and a lot of activities that's going to be for the school system. And thank you for allowing the, the bands uh, to be a part of this. So again, thank you guys. And give our elected officials a nice hand. With that being said, uh, that acknowledgment was great. Now I'm going to at least give my colleagues an opportunity to come forth and just have a moment about kind of how this all came about. Uh, and we'll end with, I call him my historian, because this particular project not only started with this administration, it goes back even further than that. And I won't steal all the thunder, but I want to say kudos and thank you to uh, Mike Mulcair, uh, uh, Tom Worthen, who did an excellent job at listening to someone like myself that had a category for Parks and Rec at 11% that we challenged them to increase that amount to get something of this caliber to 17% of that $100 million. And I just want to say thank you. And guys, those guys did a, an excellent job at helping us get here. That's, that's where the seed were planted, there, to get what, we, what we're having to experience now. So with that being said, I'm going to ask if I would please, you guys give a nice warm welcome. And welcome to the podium, uh, our chair of the Board of Commissioners, uh, Dr. Ramona Jackson-Jones, and have a couple of words if you guys give her a nice hand as she comes forward. Hello, everybody, and good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Certainly want to acknowledge, first and foremost, the citizens of Douglas County for making this possible by saying yes to our SPLOST. Uh, we had 80, and we have 84 projects in the oven. But I uh, would like to uh, certainly uh, acknowledge our chairman of the Parks and Recreation, and certainly my colleagues and appointed and elected officials that are here today and certainly want to, our county administrator, Sharon Subedan, and our Parks and um, Recreation Director, Gary Dukes, and our entire staff, staff here in Douglas County government. You all have set standards for others, will be judged. And uh, this is a proud moment. Thank you again, David Good, and Terry Gable, and Ray Lynn, and Mr. Sutton, and, and I just cannot uh, leave this podium without thanking our Master of Ceremony. 
Mr. Mike Blinn today. He's awesome. He's doing a great job. Let's give him a hand. This is the day that the Lord has made for us to enjoy the fruits of our labor. Uh, this, uh, I, I would like to thank the brainchild or the children, Commissioner Mitchell and Commissioner Robinson, who sat in a room and had the forethought and the idea to see this moment come. But also I would like to thank my colleague, uh, Terenio Carthen and Ann jones Guider and, and myself who stood in the wings and you know, it's easy to think about something and start, but the hard part is finishing. So we finished something today and I'm so proud and this is a good day. And so uh, I look forward to coming in and watching our vice chairman make his first shot today. I heard he was a pro basketball player in his, in his day. And, um, and of course, I'll be here. And thank you, Commissioner Mitchell, for thinking about a track, an indoor track. I am allergic to everything outside. So now I have no excuse not to work out. So I will be indoors in the track, and uh, you all will see, me, see more of me than you want to, probably, Chad. But again, I, I want to thank everybody for being here today. And this is a good day for Douglas County. Thank you. And on behalf, as Madam Chair serves as the Vice Chair of the Parks and Rec Committee, we want to just present this hat to you, signed by Mike Glenn, as, the, as we bring forth uh, the grand opening of this new facility. So thank you again, and thank you for your support, and thank you for just doing what you do, and thinking about our kids, and thinking about our community. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, my, one of my colleagues wasn't able to make it, but we still want to acknowledge District 4 Commissioner Ann jones Guider for her great participation in all of this as we move forward in opening up this grand opening of this building and doing what we do, though. So let's give Ann jones Guider from District 4 a nice hand. Next, I would like to have come to the podium and have a couple of words that will be District 3 Commissioner. Now, she came on board in the midst of the, what I call the storm, and this is a great storm to be a part of. And she's been all in. She's been all about community. She's been all about our kids and about this facility and making it come to fruition. So I would like for you to welcome my dear friend. And I just, she, we couldn't have did this without her. And her, she's kind of bringing, she's bringing up the rear. But we want to give a nice, norm, nice warm welcome to Commissioner Terenia Carthen. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Wow, y'all look good this morning. The music sound good, the band sounds good, and um, I just want to say, New Manchester, if you are being compared to the fam, you ratless, y'all yes. on point. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much to the citizens. You guys are the reason why this facility exists. It's because you went out into the community and you allowed your dollars and your cents to stay in Douglas County. And so your cents makes sense today. Do you see it? Yes. So yes. without you, this could not be possible. We thank you so much. I look forward to walking in here and seeing um, two on two games. I look forward to seeing, you know, different leagues coming into play. I look forward to seeing leagues from all over the state of Georgia come to Douglas County so that when we do the next plus, we'll have an even bigger facility. Because yes. <laughs> we're inviting people in to spend their dollars and, and to take part in what's here in Douglas County. So again, thank you so much for coming out this morning. I look forward to seeing what else Douglas County brings to fruition. Have a great day. And on behalf of the Douglas County Parks and Rec Committee, oh, we just want to, yeah, okay, look here. Okay, all right. <laughs> But on, on behalf, and we just want to say thank you for your support. I mean, I know this has been a long journey, and you came in in the middle, but you always bring up the rear. So we want to give her a, a nice kudos for bringing up the rear and keeping us focused thank and moving forward. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. As you guys may or may not know, and it, it was kind of sad, but may, I don't want to go unnoticed, that this is, this is one of the largest Parks and Rec project and or building in Douglas County history, this building. But understand, there's an additional piece that's going to come along down the road. We had several stages of this layout, and we built it to add on. So this is only just the two-thirds of uh, what's yet to come. So just imagine once we complete the building. Right now, you'll enjoy what we got. 
but there's a whole lot more to come. I just want to say thank you for just thinking about this and allowing myself to lead the charge on the Parks and Rec Chair Committee to, to do what we're doing. But, but thank you for just thinking along that line and understanding that this is important. And this is what you guys told us that you wanted as a Parks and Rec. This is what the community said. This is not something that Commissioner Robinson and myself made up, but we held feet to the fire on those who partake in this whole di this layout. So just work with us and, and, and trust me, there's more to come. And speaking of which, I'm gonna bring up my vice chairman of uh, the uh, Board of Commissioners who got a, a, a history about this, kind of how it all began, where it stemmed from, how do we go from 11% to 17%, and I'm going to allow him up with a few words so you guys can understand kind of how we got here. And you're going to enjoy this moment. Again, Vice Chairman Kelly Robinson, thank you. Okay. Lined up. Got it. Greetings. Greetings. All right. Um, where do I start? This will be quick because this one is, this is personal. Um, in 09 when I came in, um, it was a different place. We were going through a recession. You guys all remember that, the Great Recession. Different time, different place. And we talk about SPLOS and we talk about referendums and using your tax dollars and doing that period of time, though it was a prior administration. Uh, the choices that were made during that time was to build a jail. Now, I'm going to share that. I'm going to tell this story in the context of what this building means versus that building this choice versus that choice. Empowerment and liberation versus incarceration. Because this is important of why I chose to be here. I gotta thank my mother, Gloria Robinson, my mother-in-law, uh, Bernice Arnold, uh, President Emeritus of FWC, Ursula Robinson, my two sons are here, Kelly Jr. and Christopher, because it's all about family. The sacrifices that were made for me to be here. This is personal. Remember, this, this facility is not just this facility. This is a 500-acre mega complex. It has football, soccer, equestrian, walking trails, baseball, disc golf, all right here for the entire family needs to be met. And when I came on board in 09, the whole point was something for the citizens, but we chose what? To build a jail. I can't let that go because this is my last dance, as you know, and you will never forget this history lesson. It's about your choice. That jail costs 150 million. This costs seven million. If I do my math right, I could have built almost what? 20 of these? And we only needed what, Gary? Four? Right. For the other three districts? Right. All right. The other context is that to, to resurface the roads that we're, we're talking about, right? It's $2,000 per center mile. David Good, what is it, 700 center miles? That's $140 million. So I could have resurfaced every road in this county for that jail or built 20 of these with that decision. Yes, sir. Do y'all get it? Yes, sir. All right, but that's the past, but now we move forward. And so here we are, me and Henry, in this meeting. Now, Henry, you didn't tell the story right. We're in this meeting in the work session. Now, we're in the minority at that time. Now, I mean, Henry, he joined and stuff, and so now it was game on. Two on three. Mm -hmm. Mr. Glenn, you've never been two on three. Like, okay, we, we got this. It was two on three. I mean, he, he's the ultimate defensive guy, and I'm all offensive, but the story was such that he was serious. You know, it's something about working with my colleagues, Commissioner Mitchell, like, no, I've never gotten anything done without him. He's that important. It's about respecting his gift. Now, now, he's a commentator. He's a commentator. He's on TV. He's on radio. <laughs> now, so it's important that you got to know how to yield your gifts, right? You, you can't try to compete and try to replace. No, no. So when, when Henry, and he played football, and these guys are natural athletes, right? These guys are those guys, right? They're the best, but I can beat the rest, right? We're, we're, we're intramural. We're wreck people, right? But I say this about Commissioner Mitchell today because he's in this room. This is important because it didn't go that easy. It wasn't that easy. You had opposing forces that didn't really want to do this. Right, so don't, 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 don't be convened about what you're listening to. I got to tell both sides. So here we are in this meeting, in the workshop, in the work session. And so Commissioner Mitchell always on the phone. I mean, he is forever on the phone in the middle of a meeting. And he doing like this. Like, you know, and, and, and I'm like, no, no, but, he, but, but you know how he is, but he's going to make his point. He makes his point and says, okay, that's not enough. Now, that's not what I do. Now, while I can't see, and I thank God he's given me enough vision just to see this before, before it's all gone. I can see this building. 
but it's one of those where I can listen quite well. And so Commissioner Mitchell has to go to his one o'clock and he's getting up and we're arguing about how much money to put into this thing. And he said the 11% is too small. I'm like, I don't know, but I'm trusting his gift because of who he is. I trust him. I believe in Commissioner Carthen and I trust him. You get it? And so when he made the call and he says, okay, as he walked out, he says, okay, that's not enough. He leaves the meeting. Now I'm, I'm one on three. I'm by myself. He's gone. Like, how you gonna leave me, man? Look, I gotta play defense. I gotta get through this. And the whole point is like, okay, but are y'all listening? And I was able to convince him to agree, which is one person. And I fought for his voice because he left the room. It's about fighting for others. In other words, like, okay, well, I don't know, but I, I trust what he said. So we went 17% and it mattered. We would not have been able to do this without that one decision, that one point of, of fighting. But okay, now we got beyond that. Oh, let me tell the story. So I acknowledge, is Michaela Bragg here? Is Michaela here? Michaela Bragg is a citizen of mine. And, and as Henry talked about this referendum, we did six town halls to educate the public. Yes, it was a great process and stuff. So we're out there, we're building, beating, this is what, 16, Commissioner Mitchell? Yes. We're out there ad, ad, advancing. I'm in Anawaki, Mount Vernon, Greythorn, you name it. I'm all in Silver Creek. I'm out there pounding the pavement. You know, that's when you guys put me back in for my third time. And so we're out there and we're campaigning and we're doing this and we're advocating for this. And guess what happens? I meet a citizen and she says, you know what? Commissioner Robinson, you need to do something for uh, the youth out here. You guys built that jail and you're not doing anything. I said, well, wait a minute, it's not my job to design this. You tell me what we need to be done. Michaela Bragg comes back one week later and she wrote an entire business plan for a community center. Call me out. She, she lived over in Anawaki and I have to give her credit because anything I've ever done has come from the mouth of a citizen. Whether it's the buses, whether it's mental health, whether it's the, uh, the senior center. Everything I advance is one citizen has spoken and it planted that seed and it germinated. And I say this that because here we are, now this is the end of the story. So here we are and a citizen, and so now we're going around telling everybody about the, the types of projects that we may consider with this referendum. And so I, I, I said I would advocate for my citizen to do this community center. And so when the county administrator and the staff shows up in this HOA, and they're going through the presentation of things to be considered. And I'm standing there proud and stuff like, look, okay, they're going to reveal that you know, I went and got it done. And when that community center was not on the list, and that citizen lit me up so bad, and she said, and threw me out with my own deputy, get his butt. I mean, it was, but it, it pierced my soul because the administration, oh, you can't count my vote. You can't register my voice because I represent the interests of my citizens. Oh, I said, I'll be right back. And I go in there and I talk to the chair at that time and the county administrator, and I said, okay, what's the deal? They said, well, we're gonna get to this later. It may be some money left off over at the end. I said, wait a minute, I'm gonna carry the splos? And you gonna tell me that we're gonna get to it later? You're not even gonna register, type it on the list to acknowledge it? Well, I'm, I'm quite sure you know that when I was in making a vote for that county administrator to be there because my, my, my project wasn't on the list, he's no longer here. I mean, it, it, it mattered. Just like your vote when you go downtown and you cash your vote. You don't care what happens with the overall results. We know it's a voting process, right? We, we get that. But did you get my vote? Yes. All right, so I had to fight for this. You had voices that, like, that my own administration, I represent your interests, was going to dismiss and invalidate. You guys know I'm a warrior. I'm here to fight for you guys. I, I don't bend. I don't compromise. I'm always on the right side of history. I'm not corroded. Oh, I've been tested but I fight for the citizens, I stand strong. I do not move. I advance for the right reasons, so I stand here saying that this center is, is, is really not all about that, it's about, it's about the youth. I'm, I'm Magic and Michael's era, I was just talking to, to the Stinger, I'm, I'm, but this is about the Kobe LeBron era, the, those youth, and I'm gonna end with the story about my sons and how they inspired me, because it was my, my oldest 12 years ago, since you mentioned 12 years ago, that was at this, we were at the, we, we brought Winnie Mandela to Douglas County. So we're at the, the you know, my first year in office and stuff. And we, we raised $10,000 at lunch and we did a CEO, we raised the money for what we want to call a, um, a teen CEO camp. And my son, my oldest was in there. He said, dad, you know what? I'm, I'm going to write this project with his three friends. And they said they wanted to create a center in which they could what? Play basketball and charge for it. I said, okay, so that's a structure. 12 years ago, then what? Three years ago, my, my, my youngest, ah, oh, Kuta, one is the priest, one is the king. And so the, the, the youngest, um, at 18 years old, you're talking about state championships, he took 11 and 12 year olds to a state championship. 
twice. All right. No, 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 y'all got to hear me now. No, he got the programming. And there's nothing like you telling your story, but there's nothing to watch my, my two sons be out in the court and I got to watch this one game. This one game and where, where, where I'm watching my, I mean, I, now I can't see, but I'm feeling my sons. I'm like, look at this guy, look at these guys. And I'm watching them with 11 and 12 year olds. And they're, they're encouraging this guy that looks like Charlie Brown because everybody got to play. And this little kid is on the court and he is sitting there, he looks like Charlie Brown, I swear. And when he, you know, he's in there playing, he's dribbling the ball and stuff now, whatever, he got the ball. He's going down court. He is right there at the free throw, and he's trying to get his feet together and stuff, and he dribbled. He pushed that ball in the perfect layup, and when you see the, the crowd erupted as if you hit a three-pointer from a half out. <laughs> I mean, they, they erupted in such a way that you can see his confidence, and you can just, I mean, everybody was high-fiving. I mean, it was just a, and he ran down the court, and that's what this center is about, about empowerment of the youth. It's the next generation. See, I can fight for their liberty. That is what this is about. So that, that you, Brandon, I hold you charged to this. I, I, I hold you that you stand up for this next generation, that you take care of this. For the partners that are out there, the social, all those social organizations, the Cap Outsides, the Omegas, all those guys, the AKs, Delph, I know y'all do ball too. All y'all, y'all have to step up and encourage and help with programming on this. Because this center is from the heart. It's something that is for the youth. And Commissioner Mitchell, I cannot do this without you. I thank you so much, sir, because you're that guy. But also, Gary Dukes. I'll leave with this, Gary Dukes, wherever you are, I got to acknowledge the best pound for pound, pound for pound, Parks and Rec director in this state. Yes. Yes. Pound for pound, yes. pound for pound. Yes. Yes. And he's riding on the house right now because he's supposed to be long gone. We made a commitment, did we not? Yes. We said he could not retire until he finished this building. So now that you've got, you've got my release and my blessing, and, 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 and really, Gary, you're righteous. Thank you, sir. Commissioner Mitchell, thank you. Thank Very you, good. As I, as I stated earlier, he's that historian. And, and, and I didn't want to give you all of that because you would have been, it would have been repeated. But again, thank you. And again, we could not have done this. It, it, took, it took both of us. It took my colleagues. It took uh, the prior administration to get where we are. So thank you. And thank you to all of you, the citizens of Douglas County, for allowing us to be your leaders when it came to this splash dollar. Thank you again, and have right. a seat. Thank, thank you. you. Smile. Yeah. Okay. Wow. I told you that was a lot. I, I knew he would do it, and he'll bring it home. So again, guys, thank you, and thank you for allowing us to just to lead this charge and, and take your splash penny uh, that came from outside the county. And for those of you who spent within the county over at Arbor Place Mall, Kudos, thank you, we really appreciate you. <laughs> Continue to spend because we, we've got other projects that's on, uh, that we wanna put you on notice about that's forthcoming. So uh, thank you again. And I just wanna, before I leave, uh, can we get those other hats, I think it is for, I think it's Madam, uh, and these are all signed by Mike Glenn. This is uh, uh, Madam Superdan, if you would please, Madam Superdan. Okay, and uh, Photo op moment, photo op moment, here we go. Hold on, I'll take my mask Okay. This is with a bad hair day. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for all of what you do. And all of this is signed by our dear friend Mike Glenn. And uh, that's a, a mementos that you can take and, and enjoy the moment with that one. Uh, who this one? Gary Dukes. Listen, Gary, pound for pound. This is the guy. You want him in the ring with you. So try. <laughs> Thank you, thank you again. Thank you again, and thank you for all that what you do. And we really appreciate you and all that you've done to keep this Parks and Rec community just in order. So thank you again. Thank good you. job, good job. Yeah. Oh yes, yes, and you got a great team. Did we miss anybody? And, and we're gonna bring it home with my dear friend, Mike Glenn. Now I, I, I was over at a location with a dear friend of mine from the school board, the school board chair doing uh, a great ceremonial, ceremonial book uh, review and book signing, and she was talking about her great book about Douglas, about Frederick Douglass. But we won't get into the, the midst of that, but we'll just talk about what he did. And when I saw him, uh, his spirit just came over me and said, this will be the ideal person to be the master of ceremony for this particular event. So I just wanted to, again, say thank you for accepting my honors of being a part of this. And we want to present this to you on behalf of this grand opening. And thank you again for just doing this, OK? We really my appreciate you. My pleasure, <laughs> sir. My pleasure. Good job. Thank you, thank you again. Oh. 
Hey, welcome back. So I guess you just had a chance to see all the, the great speakers, Mike Glenn, uh, my colleagues, and I hope you enjoyed that moment with Vice Chairman Kelly Robinson. I mean, that was, that was awesome. He told the history of how we got here from the prior administration, which is um, Mike Mulcair, uh, Tom Worthen. Great. And now we're here at this great facilities that we've put together based off your splash dollars. So thank you again, but I got more to come. Check this out. I'm gonna go in here and do the unveiling. I'm gonna give you a chance to see the unveiling of this nice plaque that talks about who are all the players in this. So join me as we do the unveiling of this momentous occasion. Come on and join me. And thank you guys for this momentous occasion. And uh, on behalf of the Board of Commissioners, the Chairman and the Board of Commissioners, we just want to unveil the plaque that will be standing here and a part of this whole grand uh, occasion of what we did and how we got here and all the parties that was a part of this process. So right now, I guess the, the Vice Chairman Robinson will kind of take and pull and we'll unveil it. We'll and we're going to do a countdown, Commissioner Mitchell. Okay, you tell me that you Beginning you at five, four, three, two, one. Unveil! And this kind of how you do it. Oh, that's good, that's good. Hey, welcome back. I'm Commissioner Henry Mitchell III, District 1 Commissioner. And you know you've been checking out the whole entire grand opening ceremony? Man, this building is awesome. Now you'll get a chance to witness. Did I make that free throw basket? Hmm, good question. Did my other colleagues do the same? Check this out. We're gonna give you a chance to witness the entire program of whether or not we made the basket or not as we do the ribbon cutting ceremony right here at Boundary Waters Activity Center. Check it out.
this is awesome. Yeah, you heard the great program with Mike Glenn and, and all my colleagues, and most of all, you had a chance to witness the history of this whole grand opening ceremonial piece of the Boundary Waters grand opening by Vice Chairman Robinson. Awesome, awesomely done. I wanna give some special thanks to uh, the Splash team, Terry and, and David for just awesomely putting this project together and making it what it really is. Also, a special thanks to my colleagues, Vice Chairman Robinson, uh, Chairman Jones, and Terenia Carthen, and Ann jones Guider. Without you guys, this would not be possible. And most of all, thank you, thank you, thank you to all of the citizens of Douglas County for what you do. You did this. Your penny, Splost, did all of this. Thank you again, and now here we go. The moment we've all been waiting for, and that is the ribbon cutting ceremony. Enjoy. Thank you. 